which has already been decided for the third map. We know that this is a map that both of the teams have a lot of experience. Team Heretics decided to change the composition, go for the double controller, a lot of uh, what other teams in EMEA are doing, but the way that EDG present this map, how they uh, run the globe, some might think is a little bit wacky, but the presence that they're able, and the pressure that they're able to put across the map definitely pays off. You guys like the club? Of course, why not? Clove is a beast right now. I love the club. I love the club, and you know, just the double initiator comp on the one side and Viper on the other. I'm loving this. I, you know, in Americas, especially for our team, there's a lot of discussions, a lot of debate back and forth about what's going to be uh, the flavor of this map, what's the best comp. And for us, it was a double initiator. It was without the Viper, but I think it makes sense that the raise is coming out because the Viper, the HP gets dwindled down. So just in tandem, these these utilities work together well. Uh, and now, Christina, you are no stranger to the deck, so you know that Bren and Sideshow are waiting for us on the other side. Would you like to do the honor and toss to them? Bren, Sideshow, take it away. A true professional in every sense. Listen, in every sense, I'm, I'm ready for Bonner to step back into the ring. Listen, that, <laughs> the talent, talent are ready and waiting. Open arms, I'm telling you. Open invitation here. But Hello. Lotus for our map here in the grand finals, middle ground here. We're in terms of what we're reaching with the map pool over well. these teams and the map pick fans. And where they've gone, EDG. I've kind of upset a multitude of opponents, I think, over the course of this tournament on this map. You know, you can dismiss their composition for being non-standard, non-meta, but they do make it work, and it works well. They make it work amazingly. They, they are great at playing around smokes, they're amazing at trading Kanka, and their pistol round strategies are always creative, always finding success. This round, at least in the creativity, looking to be no different. This is going to be a big push out of C and B, and that puts all of the pressure on people like Benji or Woot to try to hold on or make at least the right decision of whether to hold, whether to run A. Hey. You see it. Kitchen sink is locked over towards it, trying to take that private ball line. That's a good connection, Kang Kang. Split in the water, you can sense it, smell it, trying to go for the pins to contain for now, Heretics. Now the advantage. Stunted to slide down this bush. Nobody seeking to redeem himself into that spot for a moment's notice. Taking these timings, this was stuck on mini boom. He's stuck on the spot before he squeezed. Out of spot, out of position, still tackles through, and his team's gonna make the decision for him. Taking that space onto the side. Now everybody trying to go over the retreat. Now he's gonna top it away. Pistol in the hand. Oh, hope to claim these kills. Stopping them up potentially for that rainy day. Kang Kang. He's relentless. We'll let them lose, and he won't let them. Not even a single chance. Heretic somehow. Right ahead to find a way through this. Top through the wall, nobody. He's left in a difficult spot to 1v2, but all that damage done. As we said, Briar shots online. That's just a disgusting pistol from EDG. Nobody with so much value there. Selecting the beat, react, which I think was the wrong call from Heretics. You know that they push out B and C, you know that A is open. I'm not really sure why they tried to do that small bank into the B site. Maybe over anticipating the EDG were going to read the A pivot. EDG were ahead of them at every part there. Up until the very end where nobody was in a tough position but pulled out of the Red Bull clutch. Fine by the pistol rounds. No loss here, but EDG continuing on momentum. Smoggy. Still holding down, locking down towards C mount. So he's got a fault line just in case. Door opens wide, but paranoia at every boat, there's a chance. Lose B main control, no. Small heretics have worked back. Into predictable avenues. Pings out from Heretics over towards C, which is where Smoggy and Simon are holding. But it doesn't really look like there's going to be enough utility to shove them off the line. Even if Boo decides to commit Haunt or a Prowler to do this, I think they're just going to break it. Be surprised if EDG gave up map control. Yeah, let's just respond with the fault line and you keep this stack over towards A. Two players crossfire setup. Might check over to the blender. Okay, Kang Kang! Tries to play off the flash. A couple of these eco kills, he's handed over the rifle to them. 
just that. That makes three shots, three through the smoke, and moving for possibility. Get the slant on line, putting the pressure now on the Rins. He still returns to the frack. Traded though. And Heretics have set themselves up into this post plan. And he's on the rifle. Did Smokey see any move here? I don't think he did. Fault line ready. Time to strike his nice. He's trying to run these layers. Now oh, and still, it's defended from above. Benji Fishy, man of the hour. Trying to a tick here. Over a spike and rifle handed over a costly mistake. G2. Must pick up the pieces and forge a path to victory. No more balls left to do it. And Mini Moon knows it. Locks it down, holds it down. And answers right back up to the pistol. Finally, we see both teams really early on trying to get stuck in on a map, not allowing it to go early one way or the other. I feel the contact in that spot though, because he really believed that Paranoid was good. He trusted in his teammate, and he ended up being betrayed by it. Woot, playing anti flash, managed to swing back in and help deliver that first set for the massive hard thrifty. Heretics will be loving that one. Not only does it hurt the EDG economy, but it actually allows them an opportunity to start getting these attacking ults going, which otherwise would have been a big disadvantage. It's one of the biggest reasons that Team Heretics, or at least because tools that they have to rely on on their attack side, compared to EDG's less standard approach. The ultimates that Heretics have access to slightly better. And they found the gap here, if indeed they do press it to be. EDG is super happy to gamble. When they're on Ecos, they'll often run four players A. They'll sometimes push on defense, like we saw on the pistol. They have a lot of ideas on. Pretty powerful also, just trying to sack the sights when you're on the Eco. Something really innovative. Okay, Kang Kang. It's a kind of a peak. This spike is in serious danger of being lost. Benji's taking a risk even going to retrieve it right now. Slow down for the steps, there's enough space to be taken. Now scurrying away. Slight mistiming there, could have spelled defeat and doom for him, but okay. Sound of turret. It's nice to be taken up, but players are in position. EDG are not surrounded on almost every front. But their weapons aren't good enough to spam, so this match should go down fairly easily. They throw the paranoia in as well, just to make sure nobody can play waterfall. Now the shot's good. Played in here, what a sound. Distraction! Got to hear. Head's barely broken over! No matter it's not, if it picks a glimmer and anything, Kang Kang will make it for a gun to be handed. Cross over Benji Fishy, 1v2! Has a lot to deal with. Marla running down and nobody's right there alongside it. It's back to back! The Zooties, they just keep coming. Nobody with Bulldog in hand, it's so much there. The turret evaded as well. What was going on there? Came back to mount. Planted. Must have been offline, I think. Yeah. We didn't get to see it really inside the POVs that we were watching, but just out of range. They crept through. No problem. Even that one, found a blind spot. Well, certainly, Kaka was trying to tuck out the defense as if he was trying to play the blind right. spot. It was odd. To be honest, I think Benji pointed it. In some sense, kind of the wrong direction, too. The scrappy and explosive beginning here on Lotus. Hopefully, see it's signs that it is a bit more back and forth. Right here. Now, the blowout that we've seen on the first two maps. Missing the turret. Still here. It's not even a refresh out one way, but there's no respect now to Prowler in space. EDG and Postage, she chew up open towards Rubble. So, even with Team Heretics taking this portion of the map, EDG. Still have very good information around. Benji's got his ult online though. That one's pretty huge. When you're playing it against a team that's running a race on the other side, usually the race on defense will try to rotate C, deny the lockdown. But with this comp, they don't really have anything to stop the lockdown from coming through. That's not an option. I don't expect to see Benji try to make use of it in the round, but he's playing really passively over towards B right now. Kang, Ward and Saints actually do take a time and straight through the smoke. The kill lights it up the feed, that's all the acknowledgement they need. I think you, you've got to give up an A here, just yeah. group B or C and use the lockdown. They've got no way to really remove it. 30 seconds left. An option might be just being forced into their hand, Simon. 
Mike did go up again. Perhaps the information. Damage is being done. Straight shots are fired in through B. The scores a little bit hectic on the side of Heretic. Spoo! He goes down the outer shots on the wiser. The plan tonight. Chichi from behind. God, he's not slowing down. Seven seconds. And he's forced to give it up. The final player scuttles away. Still with that lockdown in the back of his pocket. EEG string two together for the first time on Lotus. Strange one. Yeah, and they've also broken the economy of heretics. I know that we've seen the 50s who work, but we can't rely on them forever. What is going on here though as well? Boo just missing the sound cues because of the nightfall. The sound cues you can see on your screen. I know you can see it, but that's the only explanation I can think of. And the chaos of that, I think when time's running low, decision making is going to miss. Mike said you can't rely on the thrifties. No. Heretics drop down. Fishy. Trying to be the point man. That Guardian. Disrespecting. Let's push back over towards C. Speaking of disrespect, EDG have a lot of bodies behind this. Yeah, this is one of the kind of substandard, but they still run it. Defensive looks where four players stack up towards A really early on. Get somebody posted there. You've got options. It can be coming to nobody. And you can run forwards with the Prowler, or you can just post Shishu up over towards Rubble. And it's tough, because if Heretics try to gamble that EDG have got 4A at the start of the round and fast it towards BOC, it might not be this defensive setup. I don't see here, Max Pings on the map, on the minimap at least. Heretics looking to make a mark over towards C. Smoggy seek to deny. They're going into a C's and a medal. There is a chance that Heretics have melted. Could have disarrayed them. There's a connection on the reveal! But he goes on either side here. Fully revealed. Dump and he moves leaning up onto the corner. Cuts it out from Chichu. Trying to get his team right back into this one here. He does have the angle and he hears that TP and he's anticipating it in a different direction at Ult. Lockdown. It's dropped down. This is trying. Heretics now have made their way through. It's not really great that one. I mean, Simon to place the after shot to see if he gets the play and deny it. Apparently going down, but. Tucked into the corner, Reeds. We've got an extension of time into the round now. EDG. Hold on a flank with the flash. After the waterfall. Overdrive. Into the hands of Kang Kang. Reeds just can't hold a candle to that. Movement to Kuchi. Too confusing, but spray down. Beam down. Wood holding it down. Wood didn't cross the line of the barrier. Simon. It's desperation just tucked to the side. And Josh, you said you can't rely on the 50s, but listen. Miles the card again, that money's won. This is ridiculous, it's our third that we've seen so far on Lotus. And we finally got the lockdown invested as well, and you can see now I think why Benji didn't want to use it so much in those prior rounds. They don't want to use it as a tool to get in on the sites, they want to use it as a tool to ensure they can get plants on sites. And there is a subtle difference there. Normally, when you use it as a tool to initiate, you have to exec as it's about four seconds left on the clock. That's not enough time to plant. The defenders are already going to be in trying to deny. As EDG is trying to deny Rubble currently. Reveal big coverage. Mini boo. Straight up and over. Benji Fishy looking to contain. Well, you're up the holes, but he's alone. Isolated Smoggy. By the apple. Tap tap of the rifle. Resets it. The draw is score. Oh, the play's being made. All across the board. G2! You didn't have to do it to him, no, why not? It embarrasses Heretics! In for three! He is the immovable object of EDG! And could we have it any other way? Well, that's an ace if I've ever seen one! He's been super over this tournament, he really has! His, his win rates in these opening fights, immaculate, but guess who's there supporting him on that entry too? Simon, from the back, the fault line comes through, stuns onto Woot, and frees him up to go for the rest of the kills. Tucker, he doesn't even believe it, but I just believe. He's like, hey, this guy, where are the rest of my kills? <laughs> You're gonna ruin my stats here, Chichu. Chichu, 12 and 4, he started off on Sunset, 10 and 0. Now he did slow down after that, but he's opening to the map. Drove a spear firmly into Team Heretics. 
It's amazing how much he shoots doing actually for them overall in this tournament. He's winning about 70% of his opening fights. That is ludicrous! That's absolutely bonkers numbers, and you're also seeing the value that he has across the board. On Haven, he couldn't quite get uh, working today, but on previous times, he's been so good with the lurks. Intelligent player, fairly calm under pressure too. He's one of those players alongside Kung Kong you can expect to perform in every game. He's so clutch. This is high form. Uh, I haven't pulled the numbers. I haven't gone over the deep dive. I'm just going off the eye test, but I know when I see a player who's performing, this is the tournament of his life. And listen, the form has not slipped. You might have seen it on the first map, maybe initially, but he's returned the fire and forced the timeout out of heretics, forcing them to adjust and adapt. Getting towards a rubble. It's going to be going down here. Heretics are giving up that space. See it by EDG. And I like that EDG don't fight over it. The, one of the big advantages that Team Heretics Comp has is that it should be able to win rubble fights. Kakao's always going to be a bit of a wild card in those rubble fights because the Neon can get into really unexpected situations. But generally speaking, Heretics should be able to own that part of the map. EDG, though, seems to have anticipated that this is going to be. Nobody's looking to get in for own crawlers. Crazy one, yeah. He's hyper-traded here. The showstopper in the back pocket of Minibu. It's punishable. I just don't like the look of this. Potentially coming back to Rians. He looks a little indecisive here. Rians is looking for that info that would just inform Boo what the correct decision is. Boo's had his lead oh, go towards me, towards C, and now coming back to A. Yeah. Without really putting pressure anywhere. They're not pulling defensive rotates. They're not at all. The jiggle to try and get that info. Rians is calling great guys and potentially giving this all the way up. Yeah, they need to rely on ults. What is that? White face, white plays to the sea, but face him. Simon steps up, takes the challenge, and takes the fight. But now a squeeze, Harvey. Oh, yeah, it's perfect! And an ultra supplement. It's a cherry on top. Nobody denied. Gets that past the blue room. Ten seconds. Smoggy just wondering where it all went wrong. He's a player that's been alone defending C in these past couple rounds. Usually, this is his map. He's averaging a kill per round when he plays Clove on Lotus. But this would be something different. Yeah, you have to pump up those numbers heavily. Jumping through his mini boot. Shuts it down, bullet to the brain. I think it dead on the money there. Where did it all go wrong? Because EDG had the setup. They knew the team heretics were looking to head to over towards A. Or at least they had a read on it. Shishu also went towards Mound. Confirms all of the macro is in favor of EDG. And yet the peaks. She should just, after we'd already confirmed it wasn't seen, they'd be looking for a bit of info that he perhaps didn't need, and we punished for it. Heretics back into it. Round down for now. For now being the key words. Kakang! This handed, offered an opportunity, and snapping reaction times are on display. Damage and bullets exchange, wound from behind! Looks that directly stolen from him, it's Rians. He lights up the feet. So much damage we've done. The players from Heretics are leaving bruised and battered. They haven't forced out the Rolling Thunder either. If they could have put enough pressure on Simon, maybe he would have cracked, but such composure to keep that ult. And if Smokey gets one, suddenly, they're not dead yet it's online. And this is this is the kind of spot where you oh, can try to play cheeky angles, angles like this. Well done. The only one line has to keep me to the back. Hard to miss that. Now you're putting the squeeze on the smoggy. He love this. is in the danger. There's no retreat here. There's no retreat at all. And once more heretics. Shut up discipline on display. Kang Kang! Accounted for. Certainly one before he's dropped. An open sight here for heretics. I love that snake bite. Trying to deny any space over towards Waterfall. So Rians gets a safe plant off. A decision making time for Simon. With a pit in a 2v3, you probably do not want to use it Rolling Thunder. But if they can get a spam kill, which EDG are normally so good at, maybe it becomes worthwhile. Chances. Need to kill them to make it happen. Get the ball. They have 
not any sort of reveal, it's not white. Right there. So you can still expend it. No luck of the draw from the bullets flying forwards. Heretics have wrapped this one up. Finally, we've got a map where both teams have turned up to it. A bit of parity. I definitely agree with Paul went who's talking about the nerves being present on Haven for EDG. I think EDG just came out with a phenomenal lead on Sunset. The main heretics just looked like they weren't even home. Now we get to that even territory. I think Nebu's probably talking there about the way that Kung Kung slid into them. They have to be ready for that kind of stuff because he's right, Kung Kung will go for those plays. He's the kind of player that will sacrifice his own life sometimes to try to make a winning spot for his team. To remain vigilant. You still use it, Smoggy! Straight back onto the line. Minibu is taken out. It's gonna watch now. Watch this team to see if they can piece together this round when they're playing down. Even more so onto these angles of contact play. It's called an around paranoia. Not even a connection. Smoggy is working his mouth like it's his playground right now, especially onto the side, but he needs some back up. He needs a bailout. Heretics finding it. That's it away. Cancel the movement. Can get dropped down with the decay damage. Can't stand against it. Smoggy. Also being pushed back, pushed away in the battle storm! Benji! They knew he was there! The right you till at the right time to punish Smoggy, trying to clear the way through. One kill found, he's still going to knock dead. Yes! But he doesn't even need it! On for the ace! Damage Thunderboo! Round and round we go onto the sides. Taking it away, he's the speed boot. In tight, there's no plants on lines. Pressure still on the shoulders of Boo. How long does Boo hold for? Smoggy's reading into this thinking that he's gone for the rotate? Oh my. It's a possibility. There was enough time for it. Boo could have walked all the way and just ran when he was out of range. But now, back over towards C. Boo could die to spam here as he plans. But I'm not even sure that Smoggy has enough bullets in his gun. for the reload. He was scared of a player being close. And now, creeping all in up close. 1v1 still down to the timings. Smoggy! Can't do it with pistol in hand! It's Boo! Who stands tall! It was up to him to be our veteran presence to make sure that the round did not go amiss. What a clutch from Boo. Desperately needed for Heretics, I think. I'm not a fan of how Smoggy played around these situations though with his ult. I think you look at that round from Smoggy without an ult online, he played immaculately. He conserved his life, backed off, played off his team's paranoia. I actually think though that when he has the goal vault online, he can afford to be way more aggressive in those spots and use the ult to play his team in. I'd like to see him try to take that impact early on. I love you. I had agree with that. Pulled this time out initially from EDG. Three rounds in a row for Heretics. And they've been abusing the side tankers, essentially. Right? They've been trying to find spots where there isn't a seize or a stun to stop them, and Heretics can burst through. And they'll call, they'll call some cancels. There'll be a couple waves in the exec. It's not anything super simple. But EDG need to get a read on where these are coming. Odin being bought here for Boo as well. Let me try to do early spam over towards A perhaps. Yeah, the players drifting over. EDG, still some bite left into the round with the weapons they scrambled together here. Rifles in the hands, four of them. There. There. Also on line two, so could be willing to scrap here. That's big time. Yeah, nobody chunks down. Sets up for the TV. Nobody's committed here. The door's not even okay. Breaks it, backs away. Evacuation is called for. Mr. Haunt as well. It was broken, of course, but he was aiming for on top of Rubble there, so they wouldn't stand the back towards where Woot was. They lost the info over towards A. Now, Odin purchase ended up coming through very clutch for that opening fight. There's the extra elements. 
you come to expect anything from a team like Heretics. A little spice to throw into a round, making sure that it is not much more winnable here. Go on for the potential B pivot, the door's already opened wide here. Benji puts that scrambling towards them. And now it's Simon, time to strike. Time to see if he can collect the Corolli's kills up and around T2. Back and around, obtains the upgrade. Three versus three is where we stand. Heretics with time to cancel. EG thought it was actually a B pivot going on there. You can see it in the way that Chichi threw his paranoia. Yeah. And yet they still held tall. Now nobody has to do it all. Sees the shoulder. Trying to play patiently. And Smoky drifting into the fight, into the fray. Not what's for? Anticipating that re-swing. Opts into the old now. Not dead yet. Spam follows through. He needs to kill him. He needs the assist. But Heretics are the ones under that pressure. And G2 collects! I wasn't expecting the round to end like that! Just looking over towards Smoggy! It's no play. He had limited time to be able to get value out of his ultimate. And it looked like he was playing passively. But then he ran away from the clove! Trying to deny them value! And straight into the waiting arms of Chichu! That's tragic for Heretics! To collect. Beautiful transfer as well. We missed that one, but still got to admire it. He's sitting at 15 and 7. And again, the team with the weaker economy. Though it wasn't a full thrifty, he comes out with the goods. 5-5. Five, five. Strange map. Benji has it online again. His ult. Once more. Only spam. TP across. TP up top. And Luna's going to be traded. Just a one for his efforts. He's just still here. Guess what? He get off the utility. There's more where that came from. Boom. Leave away and a path right through, but they realize that hey, it's futile. Time to make the great retreat. Yeah, I think they actually saw both pieces of utility coming from Smoggy and Simon. So they got a pretty good read here that C is empty. And they're gonna confirm it with lockdown. Chichu is all you can go for the instant reposition as well. They can shore this one up. No, the site's clear now. Heretics. Good plan position too. Trying to think ahead here. Into the round, a bit of spam from Boo. I like this. Forces util. Force CDG to be diligent with the clearing. Oh, they actually see it. Yeah, they didn't even use utility though. They saved the util and just barrel forward with two or three players looking to try to trade out. So now they have that utility to clear the site for Boo. Oh, listen. If you clear Smoggy in, exactly. Brute force. This is the main way Harrison will seek to punish it. Still smokes. Dropped up. And heads being pried straight off the bodies. Left down with Benji. Planted for him up onto mounds. Now swarms up and over, just about catching. But Simon's got the half, and that's a potential wink on drop down time. It's up the essence ticking away from the TP up and around. He little think he lived. No way, Sunrad. No way. Drop down his tracks. And it's all Benji. I thought there was such a chance there that EDG were going to sneak that one away. When Chichu teleports up and Benji catches him, it's so likely that Benji waits for another tap. Heretics take the lead, 6-5 to five, off the back of Benji winning the Red Bull Clutch. Another huge clutch going the way of Team Heretics. If they haven't had those two, EDG might have been running away with this half. But as it is, Chinese squad knocked down to lower economy. Trying to, trying to control Rubble. They, they've kind of missed out on the control of this part of the map the whole game. Their comms is really favourite, but now they're driving heretics into B. Fast plays all around the map. Trying to go with that reaction over. Drive is here! Kang Kang collects! It's offended! And the bush is stuffed it! In the blink of an eye! 6-6! Six six. This map truly different to the prior two. In ways that are supremely satisfying both of them taking chunks out of each other going back blow for blow EDG's attack side is super potent as well Team Heretics may not have done enough with only six that's the question we're going to get it answered on the other side of this as well but for now we're sending it down to the floor momentarily as well just to get a bit of insight from the former champion himself Hey guys, here with Calm, of course. Welcome to the Nova Summit. Welcome to the Nova Summit.
끝나고 나서 눈물을 흘릴 때 저기 에트러스가 위로해주는 모습을 보면서 콘서트와 또 콘서트 아버지가 이제 넘버원 리에즈 팬이다 평생 이라고 얘기를 했거든요 그렇기 때문에 이렇게 또 힘든 순간에 적으로 만났지만 또 위로의 손을 내밀어줄 수 있는 선수가 그리고 이런 커뮤니티가 있다는 것에 대해서 어떻게 느끼고 있는지부터 여쭤보고 싶습니다 Come, yesterday you and Papa come express the gratitude towards r e a n s you know, being able to showcase uh, sportsmanship especially when you were at a vulnerable moment like yesterday so what's it like to have an opponent that's willing to kind of comfort you uh, through your hard times? Um, I think it shows a lot of vulnerability and emotional intelligence, as my dad said. Um, it means a lot to me, for sure, because I feel like I'm a very emotional person. Um, and yeah, I mean, it means the world to me that someone, even if they ran to me for me like 10 minutes ago, they become my friend right after. 확실히 얼마나 이 발로란트 커뮤니티 자체가 이키가 높고 서로에게 공감할 수 있는지를 잘 보여주는 부분이라고 얘기를 했고요. 그리고 또 홈선수 같은 경우에도 뭐 눈물이 많은 이런 어, 좀 감수성이 깊은 확실한 F이기 때문에 그런 선수가 이렇게 위로를 해준다는 것 자체가 의미가 굉장히 많았고 굉장히 감사하다고 얘기를 했습니다. 또 그러면 오늘 아무래도 리에스 선수를 응원하러 왔나 싶은데 또 어, 보내고 싶은 메시지가 있는지도 물어보도록 할게요. So I'm guessing you're here to root for Rians and Team Heretics. Anything you would like to say to him? Um, keep fighting. No matter what happens in the Strand Finals, have fun and enjoy the moment, no matter what. 어떤 일이 벌어지든 지금 이 순간을 즐기기를 바란다고 얘기했습니다. 이렇게 해서 콘서트 안 나왔습니다. Thank you, Kong. And oh yeah, hello. Oh. Sarang hey Korea. Thank you, Kong. Just beating him, still had thought for his opponent. It shows you, I mean, there's no space for mercy, but there's still room for compassion for the way that they play. Uh, I do really appreciate that. All of their thoughts here are going to be on getting that victory. But every time you win, you see the other side of that coin. And there's going to be both sides of it here today in the grand finals. No matter who ends up winning, there is going to be one bitterly disappointed loser up on stage. And that's going to be tough for either team to deal with. Change the weaponry here, EDG, look at that, can increase that tempo, but stopping their tracks as another swarms. They down prior. They've inserted Smoggy pretty deep on B right now. And what I love about watching Smoggy on these rounds is that he has Frenzy and Pick Me Up, which I think is just such a deadly duo. Yeah. Speed buff if he gets out of line. And the overheal too, or the over armor. It's yeah. just, it's so tough to deal with. The menace on the pistols. He's often in spots where he trades people out. So seeing him isolated here is a little unusual. You see nobody trying to do his IGL's duties, creating pressure on the other side of the map, indicating that this is going to be a C repop. Hard for heretics to read into that though. What is this? Oh, the guy shall find it. He's to be disciplined. And just the back to get off the wood is still there. Into the back on the side. Unaccounted for! Spike down. We'll make them rude today. And they decided to ignore that position. Two drops. There's a third. It's all on Woods. And this guy is undeniable. The form factor. An ace to nine. But Smoggy's got much more to do on the back side of that. And enough of a row with his fade for Mini Boo to close it out. Shades of Wu to Shanghai there. But they took down all of the Chinese squads and made the grand finals. It's been a quiet tournament from him. It's been very different. See them in that supportive role, looking to try to trade and help other people, help the team. We can see him have his moment here in the pistol though. And what an important pistol that might end up being. Gives Team Heretics the lead, assuming no more of those thrifties, those pesky thrifties that we've seen today. An abundance of them. Ball scored after the initial pistol round. Doesn't feel like uh, I mean, a timeout to me. <laughs> you think attack timeout after the pistol? I think it'll be the first one I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. The, the one downside of Woot getting all of those kills on the pistol is that no one else is anywhere near an ultimate. And usually, the attacking team on Lotus is going to want to be putting those into Mini Boo, Bad G, something like that. So we've got another tape pause here. Position was correct. I love the way he put the entire arena in lockdown. 
are the only teams to play in the Grand Finals, but not lift the trophy. That's brutal for Paper X. Everybody else that's been in a VCT oh, no. Global Grand Finals has found one, you know, before, after, in a different uh, different moment. And so if Heretics win here today, they'll pass Force EDG. Yep, they'll pass that over and force EDG to be the uh, recipient of that sad stat. That's brutal. The hard one. A lot of damage. Players gonna jump down on the EBG side of things here. Stand on up to this way to push back boom. Going for a few more smokes dissipating, re and scraping up onto the angles, trying to cut them up where they stand. Paranoia sweeps through, no connection. The TP has to be used to back himself away. Still a four versus four. Simmons! Oh, he was hoping for that kill. Drop down there, spikes in a lapse of Woot. And Heritage have a handle on it. Nobody left as the final player. <laughs> the spike could not be further away. He would have to make such a difficult journey. The hero's quest to try to retrieve. <laughs> the unretrievable. Wood does it again. It's a three piece off the back of that pistol. It's a wonder boy in action. Like you said, glimpses of Shanghai and he's making EDG feel it. Again though, what kind of bonus round strategy can you really concoct with an omen of? It's just not as useful. So it, it is great that we're seeing this from Woot. But you'd like to see the health points get invested into other people for Team Heretics to start some real threats on the defense side. This is cool though. Getting a high low setup from Heretics. That's an interesting idea. Look to try to punish Hong Kong, I would say here. Batu, up and over here, fault line alongside it. Simon's utility again. It's overwhelming. Suffocating. So the CDG squad and composition at least as well. I mean, I think if Team Heretics really invest in these rubble fights, they can beat them. EDG shouldn't be able to come out on top of too many altercations over there, even with the breach in their comp. Round 15, oh, it's a critical one. An impasse could potentially be an absolutely stellar beginning for Team Heretics. For the second half, or EDG making sure that they stop the bleeding. Can't can look to get cleared here. Yeah. Really? Ooh, not finding much. This info, if anything, is good for EDG to play. Okay, here in the footsteps. Bates move forwards. He's yeah, given that timing. Had a lot of platter. Boom. Drifting back into position. Have to evade a lot of this util, reveal the tags, and now he's there, sees, delayed, not delayed enough, I should say, after shot now, in through the back as well, gives him a bit of peace of mind, Kang Kang, he's right there, nobody, sure there's no problems occurring, just from the backside of pit, Benji Fishy, in position, in place, flash the peak, but the weapon at hand is not good enough, he was sharp though, he more than a keen eye in that spot. He ends with it all to do. Yeah. And no chances. EDG with a super clean anti bonus there. And showcasing that their macro calling can work really, really nicely. Kako inserted over towards his old orbit, eh? And then as Boo opened door and went for the Prowler, I don't know whether they thought it was completely clear on A, or whether Wu wanted just to check the old orbit spot in that small timing window he had. But either way, they just gave it the first kill incredibly easily. Gonna have to do better than that in terms of getting info. The only no work, boo. Never go with things. The horns. Let's pull the slide straight back. That's the recognition he was looking for, so I'm gonna spray away. Chichu does take this timing into rubble early in a ton of rounds. He will sometimes throw in the fake teleport as well. I 
think if they went for sea snakes, like delayed sea snakes over towards rubble, certainly a chance that they could catch it. And I love this deeper lumbar that you're seeing over towards mouth, because if EG threatens sea, but it's a fake, they're probably not going to break that alarm bot. Here though, they play just on the outside of it, so Benji will have the minimum amount of time possible to call for rotates. So they break it? No. They're not going to allow him that time until they hit. Exactly. Wait for the util to come back out. Regenerative. That it is. So fall line through. Benji Fishy. Is there any play to deny waterfall here? Because otherwise, EDG could get spammed. Yeah, he certainly can. It's a plan. Tucked into the corner. No spam at work. A player in position to do such that. It's Heretics. Five alive versus five. Trying to play this retake now. Planted for Mount, but playing on site. Yeah. Virtual. EDG will see if it pays off now. They're gonna try and hold this one back. Overdrive. It's already unleashed. Smoggy. Puts himself up onto the high ground. Puts away. Damage is ever going to be done. And a weakened boo can do no but scurry. But there's no escape in the side on the Kang Kang. He's got his mind set on something. He will do it. Beautiful post map play from EDG there. Made out all of that on site. We take you till. And still hold strong. I thought maybe it was going to be a two-way post run where they force out that utility and are happy to drop back to bound. They never even had to get back into that second wave. Heretics are going to need better plant denial than they showcased us just there. Only Benji on site. He really needed help from Rians. There's that CC that I was talking about, but she chews in, she chews out. So really. Even that small ante, not finding too much value. Oh, just snaps the tether. Who gets a better end of that? I think you could probably say the attackers. Because even though Chichu's both both of his teleports and taking a bit of damage, you, you've used the season and aid. So big tools. You have to delay your plane. Make sure you can deny plan. One broken. Doesn't really tell them a whole lot. Could be one player, could be many, but actually they do have the info. Regan's. Deep push and control over towards C mount. And it's either towards B or A. Nobody is constantly involved in trying to sell the fake. If you see nobody like this, it's also look, look, very clear. It. Yeah, heretics are straight on the money. They know what's up. Hang, hang out. Trying to leave the charge of the rest of the team. They're smoke stuff. Drop down in position. Boo! Just lights him up, Kang Kang. Hits, potentially rolling Woot! Beautiful shots, all rattled away. We just want our Benji Fishy, just not in place. We answer with a quick timing, unexpected flank. Simon's watching for it, trying to bait it out. Now we're committed. We're just giving that now as a chance for the Wobby. Whoa! What is going on? Shot's going to miss. Position is revealed. Classic in hand. We just cannot escape. Nobody quick to hunt him down, but that got messy. Oh, you see the right smile there. Face palm from Simon. Oh boy. That was an outrageous whiff. Almost a full clip of whiffing. From a guy who we have seen, I think, choke a bit under pressure at times here on the big stage in this arena. He's 5 and 12 currently. All the utility still looks perfect from him. But sometimes he just can't quite wrangle the rifle, and you see him here getting. Pumped up by the rest of the team too. This time it's not a disaster. This time they can smile about it. But they, their dreams will turn to nightmares if those kind of situations happen in a big round. Now the EDG hasn't hurt them too much. Got back control and lead of the map. And they actually get ults online earlier as well, Brent. They've got this. Uh, Nightfall, Rolling Thunder, two big tools to try to... Honestly, I think play in the post plan almost to make sure that you're spike committed. Because the way that Team Hex is playing right now, it's, it's quite passive. It's a big middle. Not by Simon, it was right there as well. You break this one, Rolling Thunder connects on top of them. We're trying to get the hell out of there, but it's revealed. Oh, my goodness, the counter spy is perfect! Great coverage. Reinforcements did arrive in time, and Heretics... Get that initial player advantage. I like the change of Heretics really. Looking like they're fighting over Rubble there, forces that Rolling Thunder out. 
now they're in a great position where you actually can sit back a little further. Also going to be used, looks like a bit info. Cleared out, broken. Heritage is getting a very good idea that this is going to be ending over towards C. I don't think they have just yet. They're four players stacked on A, expecting the re-hit. They should have, potentially. I'd be hoping that Utah's going to have to delay, but... Lambot now so going to be broken here. And Benji's Bad. waiting for this man. Yes, nobody. Tucked to the corner here. And after shot, just to try and at least find that piece of mine. The spam straight bullets. No kill. No decide. Nobody doesn't plant in the corner. Plants a little off. Who's going to be offloading the ult of his own? Nightfall. Scatters. Connects. Gets the mark on the three of them. No more sound cues for the majority of them. Satchel through and a bound as well with a bullet attack slaughter. Into their approach. The onslaught is going to barrel their way through. It takes control. And even out of that scoreline straight to the top of your screens. That's the kind of decisive retake you need to see from Heretics. They were in position ready to do it. Two players outside C as the plant went down. They were looking to get away with this early skirmish, so. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I agree with what he's saying. I think that fight, the like feigning that you're going to fight really heavy over that spot, drawing out the breach hole, super important. Benji's one away from getting his ult online. Smoggy too, actually. Team Heretics expecting that big fight over Rubble. They get Woot posted, and now they're looking to reinforce over towards C. Benji can't play the retake this round, at least not as easily, not without his ult. Alambo retracted actually as well, just saving that one. Yeah, I mean, Benji, he knows when he knows it from the bullet spot. He definitely knows there's a lot of players mount. GG looking to try and send it now. Now the swarm drops down towards the feet here. Is a little Yuto going to be used in time? Boom! Only with the one. Five high, straight back at them. EDG decimate the defense. With two being found from Kong Kong as well. Still continuing to carve into these sites. Don't tell me we make anything of this. It's a 2v4. The ult online for. He blew his chances, but it requires the impetus, a kill to be found at least. But with Luke dropping, chances dwindling, and yet return of the fire swing from Simon, getting his confidence back. A lot's been made of the comparison between Kong Kong and Aspas because they played in the upper bracket final. They played many times before, actually, too. But when you watch Kong Kong play, What's striking to me is that there's such a massive difference between those two duelists. Kind of a bit more similar to Minibu, although with more of a flair for individualism. And it makes me think about what Heretics have recently been saying in a lot of their press conferences. Neil was asked in the aftermath of them beating Leviathan, which of both teams have in this arena, how do you deal with our spots? And Neil, the coach for Heretics, said, well, actually, when you look at his play, he's quite a calculated duelist player. You can deal with it. To, to us, to heretics, we find the more explosive duelists that just run in there and try to take over a site and take their timings. We find those players to be more difficult to play against. Could you think of an example that's better suited than Kong Kong to the archetype of player he just described? Neil used Safe as an example, but when you're talking about the matchup here, you can already see that they're struggling to deal with Kong Kong. He's been dunking on them every map, apart from the first. It'll take a mile. He will disrespect you. He's been paying off. That one two combo of Kaka and Chichu have dominated the last couple of maps. And we're really waiting for somebody on Team Heretics to step up and have the same impact. Now it is spread and they're just one round down, of course. The goal's still left to play for. He chooses to at least invest now. He's got a stinger in his hands to make it a bit more winnable, but the. Defensive setup has adjusted. Nibu and Woot trying to make their mark known here. That's an early opening with Kang Kang falling. It's very, very tough to hold on to mount against EVG. They've got really great protocols for this. They're going to try and replay. Yeah. You see the way that they're going to attack door? Yeah. The paranoia already sent flying as well. You have to give this one up, and it is respected. Heretics. Really well done there. Just pull this here to allow not holding. 
Defoley drifting back into the crossfire. Instead of just missed it. Daily shoulder against Lee. Poke it out. Old Orlando kill. G2. He's avoiding. Dying to death with that one. The Dodge Mouse Fear still found an opening. In for remains. Smoggy selecting. It's EDG. Working magic across the map. What was going on there then? It was Boo late on the call to get the Viper Wall up? Was Rio oh, late on the, on the acknowledgement of the comp? What is going on over towards B? EDG have just been granted an excellent route back in. That uncertainty swirling. Heretic players are losing track, but maybe Rio's can answer back. It's two rounds. It's the there with Sun. And a swing once more from Simon. But not dead yet. Need to find some value, at least Smoggy is down some kills. TV from Jichu, punished, and it leads it down to one. The rookie struggling this series, at least in this map as well, with his confidence, and he's got to do it against Mini Boo Benji. Swap for the weapons, pass the rifle over to the healthier player. And a lockdown committed. Simon, how do you play this? Forced to press forwards potentially there. He's overstaying his welcome. Swings potentially. Puts them down! Simon! You demon in wait! How the hell has he pulled that off? A look of pure relief on his face. No elation. Just satisfaction that he managed to make that one work. He was completely stuck. Utterly committed to the play. If Heretics had gone in one at a time there, if their spacing hadn't been quite as tight, they had that round. The rest of his team cannot believe it. He's just given them the map. EDG up to 11. All to the back pocket of Simon. A mini boot. Hard committed. A molly to try and clear his way through, but he's straight up in the air. It's clay pigeon shooting. He can't get not to be denied. He's cracked the side wide open. With rifles in hand, the EDG catapult themselves up to 12. There is nothing that Wooten is going to be able to do about this. And Benji used his huge retaking onto the prior. And it ended up working against them. A tragic end to Lotus here for Team Heretics by the look of things. They would need some magic to get this one to overtime. It's got to be 12 for EDG. As you said, you need that magic. Heretics have not come up with the answers. And Kaka continues to tear through them. It's dominance. It's a four piece in that round. The way that he's supported by utility, there are a lot of teams that have moved away from the idea of setting up one big star player to go in and dominate. But I think EDG are showcasing that with the right supported elements, it really can work. Rien's rocked. Has the ult online. Do you go for that Camilla at the start or do you wait to see if EDG pressure C? Spare, settle in off your are heretics. Trying to dig deep once more. EDG, straight over towards B. Overdrive by Kang Kang, he's earned that one well. Bit of random spray, straight through the smoke, cleared out most of the avenue, so nobody put the plan down. Kang Kang, holding it down still with a paranoia stun! Disrespected, Mini Boo takes the fight straight to him, dropping him down, the smoke he's there! Riding in wait once more! It's all collapsing, Heretics have no more chances in this map. Reigns would have to pick up the pieces, he'd have to pull up a miracle. The double up discipline, EDG, have a choke hold on to the side. 13 to 9, Lotus is theirs. What a sick finish for this map from EDG. And I think when you look at those final few rounds and how tight it was the entire time on this map, you have to give credit to Simon. That 1v2 and his calmness in that moment has just been limited for EDG. Now one map is all that stands between EDG and making history.